Hello, my name's Francesca Hillier. I'm the British Museum's archivist. Welcome to my corner. I'm the archivist at the British Museum and I cover everything from the remains of an incendiary device that landed on the museum during World War II, not strictly archival, but in the archive just, just the same. Um, there's a brick from the old museum, Montague House, also archived. There are fire buckets from when the museum had its own fire service and police service. Um, there's even a pebble that allegedly achieved the greatest ever flight of such an object that was collected by Sidney Smith, a former keeper. So, what kind of, the, of records does the museum have? We have everything from the very first guidebook from 1778, which is so massive, I don't think you'd be walking around the museum holding it. And we have um, a large collection of trustees' records, which is everything from minutes to the trustees' meetings, letters to and from the trustees, letters from the principal librarian or the directors, letters from disgruntled members of staff, letters from disgruntled members of the public. There's a huge amount of detail which covers the whole history of the whole museum, right from 1753, and it continues today. We, co we constantly collect more and more archive material, so we have a very, very clear record of the museum and its history. We get around 2,000 or so inquiries every year, and some of their inquiries can be quite challenging. One example of a, of a very tricky inquiry was I was asked, when did the giraffes first come to the museum? Now you'd think if you come to the museum today that that's not a relevant question for the today's British Museum. But in the 1800s, we still had the natural history collections. In 1835, we know there were giraffes in the museum because they're painted on the staircase of the old museum, which was called Montague House. So I knew they were here by 1835, but I had no idea when they might have come to the museum. I realised quite quickly that in 1835, the whole of the museum's collections were listed as antiquities. And in the antiquities department, everything is indexed under A for Antiquity in no order, and there are pages and pages of A for Antiquity. My first reference was in 1840. I already knew they were here in 1835, but I found them in 1840, standing on the landing, a male and female giraffe. And this was my first clue. They weren't called giraffes in the 1830s initially. They were called camo leopards or camel opards. I'm not sure which. Um, that seems to have come from a Roman um, interpretation of it looked a bit like a camel, but it had leopard markings. And that, that was my first clue. Looking for a camel leopard rather than a giraffe in the indexes was going to help me find them. It took a lot of searching, but eventually I found a reference to them in 1817. The committee reference from 12th of April 1817 states that Mr Joseph Banks read a letter from Mr Birchall, late of the Cape of Good Hope, now residing in Fulham, why that's relevant I'm not sure, requesting um, that the giraffes, the skins of the animals, be given to the museum along with the skin of an antelope. On the 19th of July 1817, the trustees ordered that Mr Birchall's quadrupeds be stuffed according to the estimate of expense and then be placed in the collection. This is likely the first evidence that most people had ever seen an animal like that. And for, for most people living in Britain in the 1800s, it would have been quite shocking to see such a very strange and unusual looking animal. And the purpose of the British Museum then, as in now, was, was to show as much of world collections as it possibly could. And something like this, it's important. It's important that the giraffes were first in the British Museum even though they came in a skin. If you want to know more about the natural history collections, there's a blog post on the British Museum's website which relate to that subject. Anything to do with the history of the museum and its building is also covered on a separate blog. If there's anything else you'd like to know about the history of the museum or its collections, please feel free to contact me. Please also subscribe to our YouTube channel if you'd like to know more. Do you still need to tell people? Do they not just know they've got to do it now? No, no not really. Don't we